This is the Pixel Insight process tutorial for statistics. You find statistics in process, image, and here it is, statistics. When we're working in Pixel Insight, I sometimes have a feeling our heart and also our brain is a little bit split in two. On one side, we strive for beauty and it has a little bit something of an artistic nature of what we're doing. But on the other side, the processes feel very scientific and with science, come hard facts and with hard facts come numbers. So there is no wonder that there is a process called statistics. And while at least some of us, and I can only speak here for me, did not have a huge pleasure of doing calculus or statistics at school, sometimes there is a necessity. And thankfully we do not have to calculate anything, but we should be able to interpret the data that it's useful to us. So let's see what statistics can do for us. So the first thing we have to do is we have here to select whatever picture we want. And just to give some context, let's go here to just a, a simple gradient. So once we selected a picture, we get some numbers which describe this picture. And we can actually ourselves define what we want to have in here. We just go here in the wrench and you have a lot of things, some where I don't even have an idea what it is, some which might make sense. So up to you to select or deselect whatever you feel helps you in doing your processing job. We then get the numbers by channel. I have here the main channel and out of whatever reason, my graphic program also gave me an alpha channel. Let's just ignore that. But if you would go to a grayscale picture, you see there's just one channel. And if we go now to a colored picture, then we actually get separate numbers for red, green, and blue. The next thing is when you start it by default, you get this normalized reel from zero to one. And quite honestly, me again, not being a very mathematical, I really struggle doing anything with numbers like that, especially when the exponential value at the end changes, it just confuses me. So I rather like to go to the 16 bit. You have the values from zero representing pure black to 65,535, which is the full whale or the pure white. And when we look now at the gray scale picture and we go down here to minimum maximum, I think something very interesting is already that my graphic program didn't give me a full black and neither gave me a full white. And because it's not a full white and not a full black, if you now go up to count, I see that 100% of my pixels are counted. I get then a mean and a medium, which are obviously when we have a continuous gradient about in the middle. So that's what is expected. We get some standard deviations. The standard deviation is from the mean and the average deviation is from the median. And we get here the position of the pixel with the lowest value and the position of the pixel with the highest value, which makes sense obviously. On this side, 0, 0.0, we have the maximum value, the pure white. And on the other side, we actually have the darkest value. So that's nicely illustrated here. So with that, let's go to a real picture. So what can we see here? I think the first thing that might come to your attention is now that the count is suddenly not 100% anymore, but just 99%. Why? Look at this here. Look at this here. This is pure black. And the cool part is that it actually excludes that because that's not really the picture. That's just still from the stacking. So to actually include that would give a false result. So everything that is pure white or pure black gets excluded in the calculation. So the next thing, when we go here to the minimum and the maximum, we see exactly minimum is zero because we have here these blue, pure blacks, but the maximum is actually only 8,250, which is much, much less than the maximum 65,000. What that tells us actually is that there's still a long way to go until actually a star would be burned out. So that's good news. Next thing, minimum position and maximum position. I think minimum position is not that important, but the maximum position tells us where this maximum we see here is. And that helps us all. So for example, in stretching efforts. So where it is here, exactly here. This is my brightest star within this picture. Now I told you everything except of the most important thing, and that is the median, the 7.887. And this is the most used value in this process. And what you're doing with that is leveling pictures of different channels, for example, 
of the stretching that they have about the same brightness. So for example, you would now go to the H alpha and check it. Then you look at the O3 and check it and the S2. And at the end, the medium of all these three pictures should be about the same. This can be done by the means of a process like linear fit. This can be done through stretching, but this is why this process is so important. One last thing I can show you is this box here. If we click on it, we get all the result as text. And now we can simply copy paste it. So if you want to move that to a text file, to an Excel file or whatever, just grab it and copy paste it wherever you want to. So this is already the end of this very short tutorial. I hope it was helpful. See you next time and clear skies.